We stand today perched at the edge of an astounding contradiction. Our devices know more about our world than any human ever could, yet countless minds awaken each morning to worries over one single thing money. We have supercomputers in our pockets, yet so many of us still flinch at the balance on our bank statements. How can a species capable of unveiling the secrets of distant galaxies still be paralyzed by the concept of financial uncertainty? That tension between technological triumph and internal anxieties, the paradox of our age. It's within this tension that an opportunity hides, wrapped in the fabric of quantum reality and human narrative. It's not a quick fix or a get-rich-quick spell. It's an invitation to ride a wave of wealth born from awareness, alignment, and action. Imagine you're a cosmologist gazing at the night sky. Each star you see represents a possibility and alternate you, living out a different set of choices. Wealth, in this metaphor, becomes more than digits in an account. It's the resonance you emit into a universe of countless potential paths. When physicists first detected gravitational waves' minuscule ripples in space-time from colliding black holes, they didn't just confirm a theory, they revealed that even the faintest signal could echo across cosmic expanses. Similarly, every thought you think, every frequency you emit, can generate ripples that shape your reality. These are your personal wealth waves, and though invisible to the eye, they profoundly influence the currents of your life. But such waves don't exist in isolation. They resonate within a collective ocean of communities, ecosystems, cultures. True wealth isn't hoarded, it circulates fueling innovations, lifting others, and transforming societies. We are approaching a revolution in being a shift, where individuals step into roles not merely as wealth seekers, but wealth transmitters. From here, our journey unfolds seamlessly. One, recognizing your internal signal, attuning to the faint first waves of possibility that signal you're on the cusp of change. Two, applying quantum insight, focusing your intent, collapsing potential into reality, and harnessing the physics of creation. Three, rewriting your inner narrative, becoming both the author and the audience of your life story. Four, building a resonance ecosystem, aligning with mentors, peers, opportunities that amplify your frequency. Five, embracing global responsibility, moving wealth from accumulation to catalyst solving real problems and uplifting humanity. Six, claiming your cosmic role, not just riding the wave, but generating ita steward of abundance and transformation. Before every great shift, whether in physics, evolution, or human history, there is a subtle tremor, a whisper in the noise. The first signal. For most people, the wealth shift begins not with a raise or a stock surge, but with something far quieter, discomfort, restlessness a gnawing suspicion that the life you're living is out of sync with your potential. This isn't magic, it's resonance. Much like the earliest gravitational waves detected by LIGO faint ripples stretching across billions of years, your internal signals are easy to miss, but they are real. Maybe it's that moment you read a headline about someone transforming their life and you feel a surge in out of envy, but recognition, maybe it's a sudden clarity in the shower, or a persistent thought, there has to be more than this. Pay attention. These signals are not random. They are your consciousness tuning into another frequency, one where wealth true wealth is not a fantasy, but a viable reality. And just as a radio must be finely tuned to catch a signal, you must learn to listen without static. That static, by the way, is everything society has taught you about money. That it's scarce, that it's for others, that desiring it is selfish. But what if wealth isn't a reward, it's a responsibility? That signal you're receiving that urge to break free from old financial stories is not just about you. It's your deeper self preparing for stewardship. The idea that wealth could be something you're meant to generate and share not just consumes the foundation of the coming shift. In physics, observation is a creative act. The famous double-slit experiment shows us that particles behave differently when observed. In essence, attention shapes reality. 
And so the moment you begin to observe your thoughts around wealth, not judge them, but simply observe, you are already shifting. You are collapsing one wave of possibility into another. This is the moment the matrix cracks, not with fanfare, but with awareness. Noticing the signal is the first step, but like any real wave, it gains strength when aligned with others. That's where we go next. In the realm of quantum physics, the universe doesn't unfold in predictable line-sit dances in probability clouds. A particle, until observed, is not in one place. It is in every place it could possibly be. The act of measurement of observation collapses that haze of potential into a single outcome. In other words, you don't find reality, you shape it. Now let's translate that into the language of your life. You are not a fixed identity moving through a predetermined world. You are a conscious observer, a living equation in constant superposition. Your choices, your focus, your beliefs, these are your measuring devices. They determine which version of your life becomes solid, real, actual. So if you've been walking through financial struggle, it's not because you're doomed to poverty. It's because your mental lens, your measurement device has been collapsed again and again onto the same limiting outcomes, but the wave function is still there. Potential remains. You are still entangled with the version of yourself who made different choices, who learned to see wealth not as an end, but as an energy field to attune to. And when you shift your observation, when you start seeing yourself not as someone striving for wealth, but as someone aligned with it, that's when quantum insight becomes transformation. Let's ground this. Start small. Don't try to be rich. Try to feel different. If you woke up tomorrow as someone who was truly wealthy in time, in energy, in opportunity, how would you move? How would you eat? Speak? Listen? This is more than visualization. This is neuroplasticity in action. Your brain, when fed this new behavior, begins to rewire. It stops expecting struggle. It begins anticipating flow. And slowly, like a particle falling into orbit around a nucleus, your life begins reorganizing itself around this new gravitational center. Quantum physics tells us that energy follows patterns. If your pattern is resentment, scarcity, or guilt around money, your energy amplifies that. But if your pattern shifts, if you begin to embody gratitude, curiosity, and generosity, your energy becomes a beacon. And that beacon doesn't just pull in wealth. It radiates it. But no quantum shift is stable without a new story to anchor it. That's next. Every human life is a story written not just in actions but in assumptions. The trouble is, most of us are reading a script we didn't write. Our beliefs about money, success, and self-worth are often inherited passed down like family heirlooms. Some are beautiful. Others are heavy. Money doesn't grow on trees. You have to work hard to deserve anything. People like us don't get rich. These aren't facts. They're lines in a play you didn't audition for. But here's the thing. You're not just the actor. You're also the author. And you can pick up the pen anytime. In neuroscience, we know that the brain is a pattern recognition machine. The more you repeat a belief, the more it becomes hardwired. This is true whether the belief is empowering or limiting. So if you've told yourself a thousand times, I'm bad with money, your brain treats it as a law of physics, but it's not. It's just a line of code, and it can be rewritten. The new narrative doesn't begin with numbers, it begins with identity. You shift from, I want to be rich, to I'm becoming the kind of person who generates wealth effortlessly because I understand value, energy, and alignment. You stop seeing money as validation and start seeing it as translation your values into action, your service into circulation. This is not about pretending, it's about choosing. When J.K. Rowling wrote the first Harry Potter book, she was a single mother on welfare. She wasn't surrounded by evidence of success, but she lived in a different narrative. She wrote as if the world she imagined was real, and eventually, the world responded. That's not fiction, that's physics. Reality bends to sustained intention. So what's your new story? Is it one where you barely scrape by, trying not to be a burden? Or is it one where you become a, a force of insight, of generosity, of leadership? You get to choose your genre, tragedy, survival tale, or origin story. This is not about ego. It's about alignment. When your narrative aligns with your values and vision, you become magnetic. You attract 
not just wealth, but people, ideas, and moments that belong to that story. But no story unfolds in isolation. To sustain a new script, you need a new stage, a new ecosystem. And that's where we go next. No particle exists in isolation. Every atom, every electron, every celestial body exists within a field, a system, a gravitational network that influences and is influenced in return. In physics, we call this interaction. In human life, we call it environment. And here's the truth. You become the average frequency of the ecosystem you live in. If you're constantly surrounded by scarcity thinking conversations about lack, fear, and resignation, then no matter how committed you are to change, that field will dampen your signal. Your resonance will falter. The wave collapses into a smaller form. But if you enter a new field zone where people speak in terms of possibilities, alignment, impact, and value, begin to rise, not because they give you something, but because they remind you of who you are becoming. This isn't just psychology. It's physics. It's resonance. Tuning forks, when brought near each other, vibrate in sympathy. Your brain, your heart, your very cells are sensitive instruments. They adjust to the frequencies they're bathed in. So here's a bold but necessary act of personal evolution. Audit your environment, not to judge, but to observe. Who around you reinforces your scarcity story? Who mirrors your emerging identity? What spaces ignite your imagination rather than drain it? And it's not just people. It's input. What are you feeding your mind? What podcasts, books, visuals, and voices shape your sense of what's possible? You don't need a perfect environment. You need a catalytic one. Sometimes, just one aligned voice, one mentor, one honest friend who refuses to let you shrink and become the nucleus of your resonance ecosystem. And once you're in resonance, something extraordinary happens. You begin to emit. You stop just receiving energy. You start generating it. People begin to sense something different around you. They're drawn not just to your words or work, but to your field. And just like in nature, that field becomes fertile. Ideas germinate faster. Opportunities find you. Not by luck, but by physics. The energy of your environment and your contribution to it determine what grows there. But what's the purpose of all this growth if it ends at your doorstep? That's the next shift. The wealth wave, to be real, must flow outward. The universe does not waste energy. In stars, galaxies, and ecosystems, every process, no matter how chaotic on the surface, contributes to balance. And the same must be true for us. If the wealth wave ends with you, it dies. But if it flows through you, it transforms. Let's be honest. Wealth, disconnected from purpose, becomes a burden. We've seen this story. Accumulation for its own sake breeds anxiety, hoarding, and eventual collapse. But wealth aligned with responsibility, that's evolution. That's civilization growing up. You don't have to be a billionaire to make an impact. In fact, the most powerful wealth shift is internal. When you stop seeing money as something to survive with, and start seeing it as something to serve with, let's use a cosmic metaphor. Think of a supernova the explosive death of a star. It releases enough energy to outshine entire galaxies for a brief moment. But in that death, it also seeds the universe with heavy elements, carbon, iron, gold, the building blocks of planets, life, and future stars. Wealth, if hoarded, is inert. But if shared, if channeled, if exploded into the right space, it becomes generative. You don't just create comfort, you create futures. This isn't about charity, it's about systems thinking. True wealth isn't measured in zeros, it's measured in feedback loops. When you uplift others, empower communities, or fund innovation, you're not losing wealth. You're creating a more fertile ground for everyone's wealth, including your own. And yes, this requires maturity. Because responsibility means choosing impact over indulgence. It means designing a life not just around how much you can get, but around how far your actions ripple. You're not just a wave rider anymore. You're the wave maker. And here's the paradox that all truly wealthy people eventually discover. The more value you release into the world, the more value flows back to you often in unexpected exponential forms. This is the final transition before the return from seeker to source, 
from scarcity survivor to structural shaper. But even this is not the end. Because the wealth wave isn't just a moment, it's a mission. We often talk about wealth as if it's something external, a distant destination or a number we hope one day to reach. But what if wealth is not out there? What if it is through you? In the cosmos, every particle plays a role. Quarks don't wake up and wonder if they matter. They just are vital, inevitable, precise. Planets don't ask for permission to orbit. Galaxies don't apologize for spinning. The universe doesn't second-guess its purpose. It simply expands. And so must you. The final evolution isn't about what you have. It's about what you are becoming. You felt the internal signal. You've collapsed new realities with your observation. You've rewritten your story, built a field of resonance, and chosen impact over indulgence. Now comes the question, what now? Now, you live as the source. You stop asking, when will abundance come? And start saying, how can I channel the abundance I already am? That doesn't mean pretending you have it all figured out. Even black holes, the most mysterious objects in the universe, are still revealing secrets. What it means is, standing up each day with the humility to learn, the courage to lead, and the audacity to serve. You stop thinking of yourself as separate, and you start thinking like a system when you shift from what do I need to what can I cause. That's when you step into your cosmic role. The wealth wave isn't a single event. It's a frequency. It's a vibration you carry into conversations, decisions, investments, and communities. And when enough of us carry it, we reach critical mass, a point where wealth is no longer concentrated but distributed, no longer feared but understood, no longer hoarded but harnessed. You don't need to wait. The shift has already begun. And like any good physicist, philosopher, or explorer will tell you what begins in the invisible always reveals itself in time. So the question isn't if the wealth wave is coming, it's whether you'll ride it, shape it, and become the reason it exists. And if you've made it this far, I already know your answer.